we as humans tend to overdo things sometimes right and suppose somebody asked you to make a cup of coffee and make it a little bit sweeter what do you do you head up to the kitchen add one teaspoonful of sugar to it then you remember okay he asked me to make it a little more sweeter then you add one more teaspoonful of sugar then uh you think you should add a little more and you add a little more sugar to it and eventually the coffee ends up becoming so sweet that it's bitter to the person who is drinking now here's the thing the same happens with photoshop sometimes we apply a filter an effect and a while later we think that's too much that's ruining the image what do you do to reduce it is there a way to reduce it is there is there a way to reduce the effect is there a way to fade the effect Nope, I'm not talking about opacity. This is something special and you will love it. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in Photoshop with a picture of my little beautiful sister. Isn't she cute? All right. So what do I want to do with this picture? Suppose I want to remove this line. Though this is not a wrinkle, suppose I want to remove this. Okay, so I would go select the patch tool. Patch tool is selected, okay? Patch tool is selected. Normal is selected. I would simply drag it here and it goes away. But it looks strange, right? I didn't want to remove it. I didn't want to remove it. I wanted to, I wanted to uh, remove it, but not so much. What do I do? Simple. Go to edit, fade, patch, selection and reduce the effect. Watch. This is zero. This is what it was before giving the effect and you can increase it to the number you like. Suppose this is good because we didn't want to remove it. We just wanted to reduce it. And that's one of the things that you should keep in mind while editing, especially male portraits, because when you're editing male portraits, you don't want to remove the wrinkles. That's a sign of mascul the mas masculinity. So you need to reduce them, not remove them. All right, let's move on to the next example. So what do we do now? Let's apply a filter, a very nice filter, filter, uh, filter gallery. Okay, let's load it up. And I have loaded up three filters, watercolor, angle, strokes, and splatter. I love this. And sometimes I just go overboard with it and click OK. Now what you got to do, you want to reduce the effect. That's too much. You go to edit, fade, filter, gallery. And here you go. You reduce the effect. Now, as you can see, if I go to edit, it shows me the fade filter gallery. And if there's no effect, there's nothing right here. If I go to edit, there's nothing. Just below the step backward, there used to be fade, but it's grayed out. This option only becomes available when you apply something, be it a patch tool, be it a filter. Now, some of you might say, okay, what I would do, I would make a copy of the background layer and I would apply a filter there. And then if I don't like, I would decrease the opacity. But let me tell you something, you can do this. But what if you're using the patch tool? Just let's delete this. What if you're using the patch tool? For separate areas, you're not going to create 100 layers. Suppose you want to remove, reduce this, then you want to reduce this, then you want to reduce this. Will you be creating duplicates every time you do? What if your image has a thousand things to remove, a thousand things to reduce? You don't want to lag Photoshop up, right? I won't personally do it. If you like, you can do it. Who am I to stop you? But hope this tutorial was helpful. And if it was, you know what to do. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and do like the video, do share it. And I would appreciate if you could leave a comment. I'll see you guys in my next video. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.